Attorney General Jeff Sessions met with civil rights leaders on uh, Tuesday to discuss a wide range of issues. A day with historical significance, it was the 52nd anniversary of Bloody Sunday, the violent clash between police and marchers in Selma, Alabama, over voting rights. An issue, of course, still being challenged today in many parts of the country, including Texas, where Attorney General Sessions recently pulled back the Justice Department's legal challenge in a fight over that state's very strict ID laws. Joining me now is Janae Nelson, Associate Director, Counsel of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, one of the lawyers arguing the Texas voter ID case, and Mark Morial here with me, President and CEO of the National Urban League, who was at the meeting with Jeff Sessions yesterday. Uh, first to you, Mr. Morial, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Andrew. Tell me about the atmosphere, because Jeff Sessions has, to say the least, a checkered past in terms of the objections that prevented him from becoming a federal judge all those years ago, and accusations during his confirmation. This is a candid conversation. When you say candid. Candid and serious uh, conversation. So what did you all say to him? So we uh, raised, so we had two purposes uh, for the meeting. One, we wanted to present to him uh, the civil rights community's agenda. Uh, those things we think the Justice Department should emphasize uh, and work on during his tenure as Attorney General. Secondly, we wanted to raise strenuous objections to a number of steps uh, taken by uh, him already in his uh, first several weeks as Attorney General. One being the Muslim ban. Not only the first ban, but the second Muslim ban, which we think uh, strikes uh, into the heart of what civil rights and human rights are all about. Secondly, we raised objections to the Justice Department's pivot, and I know Janae will talk about this in the Texas voter ID case. Uh, and thirdly, uh, we expressed objection to any effort by the Justice Department to retreat uh, from any of the 20 police consent decrees uh, that uh, exist where cities have been found to have engaged in unconstitutional policing and now are on a corrective action course, as well as uh, urging him to continue with the federal criminal civil rights prosecutions uh, and investigations in both the Walter Scott uh, and the Eric Garner cases where those uh, men have been victims of unconstitutional policing. Uh, and, uh, and police brutality. Uh, so we raised these objections, but it was important because we're historic institutions who have worked with the Justice Department and also held the Justice Department accountable for us to go in, sit across the table from the new Attorney General, and really speak truth to power. Well, he's already said, or been quoted as saying, that he believes that these police issues are anecdotal suggesting that there's no scientific basis for these police cases. Loretta Lynch most uh, recently, right before she left office, took the case to Chicago, and Chicago is agreeing, but they have a long way to go before they're in compliance. Janae Nelson, you've been arguing the Texas case, and so I wanted to bring you in and talk about uh, this dramatic change in the posture of this new Justice Department on that voter ID law, despite the, the several federal judges having ruled that it is unconstitutional. That's right. At this point, we have 13 federal judges and several proceedings that have occurred over the course of years that establish that Texas's photo ID law, which is the strictest in this country, not only has the effect of limiting and in many cases denying the right to vote to hundreds of thousands of African Americans and Latinos, but it was intended to have that effect. And there's voluminous evidence in the record that establishes this. The Department of Justice has, in the past, made eloquent and forceful arguments in support of an intent finding. And we were before the judge revisiting this issue on Tuesday when the day before we got notice from the Department of Justice that it sought to withdraw its claim. Now, this is an enormous about face. It is a 180 degree turn in the prosecution of an incredibly important and well-supported claim of intentional racial discrimination in our election process. That can't possibly bode well for this Justice Department's commitment to equality in the election processes and in protecting the rights of minority voters uh, for the next several years. So we are extremely concerned, and the meeting yesterday was not meant to negotiate. It was meant to give notice that civil rights groups will be vigilant. We will stay on the scene. We will continue to prosecute the claims with or without the Department of Justice, but we will not let the Department of Justice go quietly into the night and simply abandon its charge to ensure the fair and impartial administration of justice for all Americans. And uh, Mark Morial, 
you, you laid out the issues that you presented to Attorney General Sessions. What was his response? Uh, we really didn't get any response. I don't think we expected a response. I think, as Janae mentioned, our purpose was to put him on notice, uh, but also our purpose was to make it very clear uh, that these issues, these civil and human rights issues, are issues for all Americans, and that as Attorney General, it's the Department of Justice, we think he's got a solemn obligation and a responsibility to be an aggressive chief civil rights enforcer uh, in 2017 and beyond. Uh, so that was the purpose, and the issues we raise certainly are not all of the issues. I should have mentioned that we encouraged and, and, and believe that the Department of Justice should not only speak out forcefully against hate crimes, but prosecute those. We've got a challenge in America today uh, where Jewish synagogues and Jewish community centers and uh, Jewish daycare centers are being uh, uh, assaulted by these awful hate crimes that seemingly won't quit. The Justice Department has a responsibility to prosecute the offenders, to investigate aggressively and prosecute those offenders. So we wanted to basically put them on notice, but we also wanted to establish, if you will, uh, this dialogue. We don't want there to be any question about where we stand and how strong our resolution to fight for these issues is. And Janae, when you in Texas meet with the judge and you're going to proceed with these cases, but you don't have the Justice Department backing you up, um, what is the prospect legally without DOJ as a partner? Well, we, would th we think the evidence in the record is, is equally strong. Nothing about uh, the Department of Justice's support of the claim changes the facts. So we feel very confident that there, the judge will find yet again that Texas acted with intentional discrimination. But what is unfortunate is that we don't have the government and the Civil Rights Division to provide the support and, frankly, the leadership in ensuring equality in our electoral processes. And that's really the most damaging and damning fact of this. Janae Nelson and Mark Morial, thank you thank both you. so very much. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.